Anyway. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us in our May presentation here in our Easy Photo Scan webinar series. We've got a couple of folks still coming online, so we'll give them just about another 30 seconds if that's okay. Meanwhile, you'll notice a chat box down in the lower part of the uh, menu that is comes with the if a couple of you could just go out and let us know if we're coming through okay audience wise if you're hearing us okay. yeah I see some hands coming up we got some hands coming up perfect okay thank you so very much We've got just a couple more people look like they're kind of logging in so we'll give them another 10 seconds, 15 seconds. All right, perfect. Thanks again for joining us today. My name is Rick. I'm with Easy Photo Scan. And we've got an excellent topic for our webinar today. I know it's near and dear to the hearts of those that we serve and by the number of people that have registered to, for this webinar, I know it's near and dear to them as well, and there's a lot of interest in this, using your photo scanning to do good for public awareness and community service programs. You're going to learn that our presenters today, we're very honored to have because they're veterans in this area, and I'm looking forward personally to getting the inside scoop on some of the things that they're doing to help their communities. But before we start, we'd like to invite you to our June presentation. If you want to hear about what it's like to provide digitization services for not only individuals, but groups like 7-Eleven, Best Western Hotels, Dallas Holocaust Museum, and even the government's EPA, then you're going to want to join us on June the 14th, that's the second Tuesday of the month, at the same time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and you're going to get to enjoy Jim Appleton from Media Asset Preservation. In his presentation, he's going to share with the group some of his experiences of not just photo scanning, but some digitization of rather eclectic items. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So be sure to register for that, and you can invite after this webinar is over. Today's presentation is really special. We've just come off the American Library Association's Digital Preservation Week. And now we're catapulting headlong as we go through the summer towards Save Your Photos Day in September. Easy Photo Scans work with both of the presenters that are going to be with us today. And we've donated some of our time, equipment, and uh, assistance as they bring photos and photo scanning uh, to the public's eye in the communities that they serve. Rachel Deo and Kim Scott are an integral part of one of the most unique groups that I know of. Uh, it was formed out of one of the country's most devastating natural disasters in a tornado in Joplin, Missouri. Maybe some of you will remember that. Their organization, the National Disaster Photo Rescue Group, not-for-profit volunteer organization, and it helps communities throughout the tornado belt of those lower plain states and this western states. And they've returned thousands of photos that are blown away during disasters, and they use photo scanning in a unique way. Our second speaker is Ann Matuzak of Pixology. Pixology is located just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Her organization has used photo scanning as part of numerous public events throughout the community. And doing so has brought Pixology notoriety not only with the press but public officials for their good works. And as Ann puts it, it's been one of the best things we could ever do because as we help others, our business of paying clients has really taken off. So we're excited about this presentation because you're going to get to hear from a not-for-profit side as well as a for-profit organization on how they're doing good with their photo scanning. We're going to have time for questions. If, as they go through the presentations, just for the sake of kind of making it flow well, you use that chat area 
to write your questions. We'll save them all and we'll ask our presenters afterwards. That way, if somebody needs to drop off early, you'll have an opportunity to do that as well because we will be recording the questions in this whole session. So without any further ado, we'll invite Rachel and Kim, I think they're all set up, to go ahead and we're anxious to hear about how you're using photo scanning to do good in your communities. Rachel, Kim? All right. Can you hear me OK? I can hear you great. All right. Thanks for inviting National Disaster Photo Rescue to be part of the program today. Um, this is Rachel, and I have Kim with me. We're excited to share a passion for putting pieces of life together after disaster and preserving photos before disaster strikes. So this ministry was formed as a response to the Joplin, Missouri E5 tornado in 2011. Then the program was called the Lost Photos of Joplin Project. Uh, concern for our friends and family in the neighboring town uh, gave rise to a desire to help in, in some sort of way. And our music minister here, Thad Beeler, while looking at the remains of his own parents' home in Joplin, he was kind of in awe of the few portraits that were still hanging on partial walls in the home. And meanwhile, people from all over the country were sending volunteers and supplies by the truckload to Joplin, eventually getting turned away because there was just too much stuff coming in and they couldn't use it all. Um, we've come to realize after disaster that loss is felt on different levels. Um, one, that survival mode after a tornado. Are we OK? Is our family OK? Our friends? And then also livelihood, um, the things you need to live, food, shelter, clothing, those types of things. And then on another level, the personal side, your mementos, the family history, items that mean something or are sentimental. So while the people of Jocelyn worried about survival and livelihood, lost photos began saving their precious memories in order to give them pieces of their lives back. We collected over 35,000 photos and have returned 17,716 of them, reaching out to 700 families in the Joplin area. Back then, with only one small flatbed scanner, it took up to three days to scan and document 100 photos at 300 DPI. Now we can do 100 photos an hour. Hi, this is Kim. My turn. <laughs> um, we want to share with you the process that we go through after the disasters happen. Um, first, obviously, the photos have to be collected. They are scattered in the wind. They are filthy, covered with mud. They're wet. So, um, you know, we put people on the ground. They go out and they just walk the streets and find photos, put them in a bag. First thing is just to get them. Then we take them um, and dry them. They have to be laid out flat so that they don't curl, um, which can take up quite a bit of space, needless to say. Um, once they're all dried, at some point we start the big process of sorting and cleaning them. Um, to clean them, we have found that the best thing to use is um, dryer sheets, used dryer sheets. And we just gently rub off the grub that's all over them. And then we have to label them. We sort them into um, like so many per, per pile. If they look like they go together, we keep, try to keep them together with the ones that they go with. And then we start the scanning process. Um, and we have found that we're not able to use the high-speed scanner because the photos are so dirty and it just gets dirtied up way too fast. So instead, we use the flatbed attachment. Um, you know, and, and obviously, it depends on how many, how many photos, what sizes they are and stuff as to how many we can put on there at one time. Um, unfortunately, the photos have to be um, renamed because we need each photo to have the file name of the photo, like, like for example, we have box one, file one, photo one, or box one, file one, photo two. So all of the, they have to be, the file itself has to be labeled 
with that same thing. Um, and then after we get done with the scanning process, then we go through and we watermark um, in order to prevent people from downloading them from the website that um, without going through the right process. We watermark them. We also reduce their file size to make our server happy. Um, and then, but we do save the large size photos just so that in case there's a dispute as to who the photo belongs to, we can get it printed for the other party. Um, and then we get them printed out, put them into photo sheets, put them into a binder, and then we get ready to start the reunification process. Um, yeah, we also upload them to Facebook. We upload them to our website. Um, Facebook seems to be the best process because we can, people tag their friends and it goes pretty quickly. Um, whereas the website takes longer, but it's good for those who don't have Facebook. Um, we also have used it with Save Your Photos Day, and the regular high-speed scanner is fabulous for that, of course, because, um, you know, the photos are clean and they're not, most of them aren't torn up and stuff. We do use the flatbed in case it, they are. But, um, for disasters, though, we really have to use the flatbed. So, um, back to Rachel, I think. Okay, I guess back to me. Um, we were talking about the ability to scan photos, and um, the reason we do use that large slot that is just because we can do um, so many at once. When we have to go through that labeling process, it's just not any quicker to run it through the PS50 um, unless we do have extra people labeling ahead of time, but then you have to watch for, for errors in the numbering system. We actually cannot wait until um, technology can catch up and we can do like a single ter terminal labeling system where we can control numbers and they can be automatically uh, labeled on the photos so that we don't have to do that. That would really speed up the process. In fact, that kind of technology um, would allow us to scan approximately 5,000 photos a day. Let's see. Okay. In our work, the reunification process is the ultimate goal and reward. By returning lost photos to a family, we are giving them a piece of their lives back from before the disaster. And it can be very emotional, but also healing. All of us have had personal experiences with tornado victims that, that we will never forget. Um, currently, we're working in Garland, Garland and Rollette, Texas. We just got back two weeks ago. Um, we scanned over 1,300 photos in nine hours, um, and they will be having their first reunification event in the middle of June, so we're very excited about that. The photos have been uploaded, and we already have people claiming um, or filling out claim forms for their pictures online, which is the easiest way that we have found to do that. We, um, we use that identification number, and they have a link to go to on each page where they can fill in their names and the identification number of the photo and claim their photos to get returned to them. <clears throat> We're also working on a handbook for National Disaster Photo Rescue that kind of explains who we are and what we do. That's in the final editing stage right now, so it should be out soon. And then um, in the near future, we will have opportunities to train and certify people to do what we do all over the country. And we can do that online by providing um, information and videos on how to do certain aspects of photo collection and scanning. Um, our group in Texas that's working in Garland and Rowlett, we had the opportunity to train some wonderful people in Van, Texas when we worked um, after that tornado. And this group actually worked the Garland and Rowlett um, disaster. So they were um, already trained, and it was just an awesome experience uh, for all of us. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, our website is nationaldisasterphotorescue.org. Our main Facebook page is National Disaster Photo Rescue. And then our individual projects are lost photos, 
<coughs> Can you do you have a new logo? <coughs> We're actually changing our logo up a bit, and you will see this very soon. It will say Lost Photos Projects National Disaster Photo Rescue because each individual project has a name. And we find that that keeps us more in tune with the communities that we're in if we call ourselves the Lost Photos Project. So that's what we have for you today, and we'll be happy to answer questions. Wow, thanks so much, Rachel and Kim. I know there's, uh, there's already questions up on the board for us here, so we're looking forward to going with them. While James helps us on the back end to switch over to our next presenter, I'd like to um, thank you for, for coming. I, the, the work that these folks do is um, behind the scenes, after the disaster is, is, has, has come and gone, um, and these folks just do a wonderful job. And if you kind of listen to the statistics that they had, 35,000 different photos that they got out of their one disaster, and they've been reuniting with folks, um, 700 different families getting reunited. It's unbelievable work. So that's the not-for-profit side of doing good with your photo scanners. But what about the profit side? Well, we've asked and Matuzak to talk to us a little bit about doing good, not only for others, but how it may help your business as well. So Anne, I think you are ready to go here. It looks like you've made the switch. And can you go ahead and get started then, please? OK, thank you, Rick. I really think that the mission that you hear from the not-for-profit and the photo reunification is something that's a passion that all of us feel. And by being a part of community scanning events, we get to share and celebrate some of that concept as well. Your community opportunities are almost limitless. And I'm just going to highlight three of them that we've done at Pixology. But as my screen says, doing good, and you do it for the good of the community, does your business good as well. Some of the community opportunities that we have been a part of is working with churches and other private locations, with museums, libraries, different organizations, and nonprofits as well. All of these places are opportunities to get your business out in front of the public and to help different groups get a handle on some of the history that they may have or that they're looking to preserve. So many of them are working with out of budget for this type of thing and it's very sad to see how things are being stored and how easily they're being lost. For example, my business partner, Molly Bartelt, has done a number of presentations at different churches. Now, the great thing about churches is they're always looking for someone to come in and give a talk. And photos are such a natural part of telling people stories that it's very easy to make a presentation to them. And if you're willing to come and talk for free, they're usually pretty happy to have you. So. When we do an educational presentation at a church, it's usually for one of their groups or organizations within the church, we always offer the, the free 50 scans um, for the event attendees. And we do this for a couple of reasons. One, it shows right away that we're serious about preserving their story, as well as preserving the story of the church or organization. Two, it gets them exposure to what we're able to do and how easy it is for us to start putting their photos and their stories back in their hands. Museums are another area that's really an exciting thing for you to become involved with. Most communities think of their main museum. If you're in a big town, you have some giant public museum, and that's what everyone thinks of. But the reality is, in almost every community across the country, and Canada as well, there are many small museums that exist to preserve various pieces of history. 
One of the museums in Milwaukee is called Charles Alice, and it supports the history of the Alice Chalmers Corporation, and at one point employed one of, of every hundred people in the state of Wisconsin was working for Charles Alice. And so when they founded their museum and they wanted to get the word out that they needed pictures from events, Alice Chalmers' company, um, Pixology became their partner in communicating this. We were really fortunate to have Rick in town that weekend. He came up and helped us scan, and we had archivists from the museum doing interviews with the people that came, and we got to see pictures on the floor of this giant corporation, um, including the very last tractor that rolled off of their line. Now that may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, but for those for whom this was their history, we got to help preserve that and send that story forward. Organizations, and the list here is almost unexhaustible, but the one that we worked with most recently was the Milwaukee County Historical Society. Now that was a lot of fun. First of all, because we got to work in this incredibly gorgeous room that used to be a baker's boardroom, and people in the community were invited to bring in pictures, um, specifically architecturally, uh, that was the theme of the event, um, of old pictures of houses, buildings, businesses of Milwaukee. And um, this woman brought in not only the picture of the house that they've purchased and are now updating and restoring a little bit of both, she actually had the original blueprints. So this now becomes part of the Milwaukee County Historical Society's archive of information about houses in Milwaukee. And as a result of doing this event, we've already scheduled a much larger one for September for the uh, Save Your Photos Month, as it may become for us. And they're really excited about being able to have more of Milwaukee history preserved and in a format that it's more easily shared with other people. The method at which they share photos right now is unbelievable. If you go in there and want a copy of a photo, they will call up a photographer who will come in and take a picture of the photo. They will have it printed for you, for which when we helped one client get three photos printed, the cost was $57. There's no online access to any of their information. So we're very excited about the potential for doing so much more for them and with them, and then making them an actual partner with us. So obviously, you can see how what we do benefits the community. We've done events at the library, especially during last week's um, uh, preservation week. We worked with the Racine County Public Library. But it also does your business good. And it's not that it's really an ulterior motive. It just showed that the more we were in the community, the better it worked. And for most of us that are photo organizers or work with photo scanners, the first thing we need to have is people aware of our business and getting out there and doing community events definitely increases the awareness. It gives you a lot of free press. Our first press conference for Pixology was held for the Charles Alice event. We had two of the local TV stations come and ask questions and participate. It was really nice. We've also had two of our last TV appearances were because of events we did for the community. From the church, we've gained multiple new clients. They loved the concept. Many of the people really understood that they were holding history in their hands. And they wanted the opportunity to preserve that for future generations. So those 50 free scans turned into 20 new clients. Completely amazing what it had done for us. We have also gained two museums, 
M1 library as clients. We recently had the opportunity to convert tens of thousands of feet of film for the receiving public library. And there, the Charles Alice Museum and another museum that doesn't have a contract signed yet, but um, are hiring us to do some of their archiving along with their archival staff. We have several future potential partners because of what they have seen us do for other organizations. And there's always the benefit of increasing those scanner rentals because people see that it's, it's easy to use. It's user friendly. We're user friendly and we can show them how to do it themselves. And so it has definitely increased scanner rental. So again, giving away 50 scans can increase a, a hundred, a three hundred, or a five hundred dollar sale. The bottom line is, by sharing your skills and your tools with the community, everybody wins. The community, the history of your community, and you as a business owner. That's what we found here at Pixology. Wow, thanks so much, Anne. Um, I, there's, there's a number of questions that are starting to come in and if you've got a question please in the question area uh, go ahead and write your question but I've got some ready to go um, first of all for everybody uh, that's on the line here uh, we take just a moment to to um, remind when I was listening to uh, Rachel and Kim to remind ourselves of how fortunate we are um, just yesterday we had tornadoes ripping through uh, the plain states and, and individuals losing their lives and all sorts of property destruction. And I just looked online while uh, they were speaking and uh, another one touched down in Illinois today as well. So, um, you know, we're only just a moment away from that disaster. Um, so one of the questions that I have for Rachel or Kim is um, you talked about doing disaster types of things. Are you also doing the save your photos in advance, kind of get ready in the event that this should happen? I'll throw that out to yes. either one of you. We love save your photos. <laughs> we, um, we've actually done a big one in Joplin and Rick, you were there with us. It was so much fun. And we also did one um, for one of the churches in Joplin that has helped us out so much. And we've done one for um, Carthage, for here in Carthage, where our um, home base is. Um, and what we offer to people is to digitize their photos at no cost. And we give them their photos on a thumb drive so that they can find ways to preserve their photos in case of disaster. And not only in case of disaster, but in families, so that more than one person has a copy of those photos. Um, my family lost so many photos um, after a house fire and then the Joplin tornado. We have tons of photos that are lost because only one person um, had a copy of them and, and they're gone. But Save Your Photos events for the community are, they're, they're a lot of fun and it's just a way to reach out to um, the communities and let them know that, um, you know, that you care about them. Um, the, uh, easy photo scan has been very helpful with the PS50s in doing those scans. They go super fast. People can come in and bring their stack of photos, like 100 photos in, and within a couple hours, their photos are done and digitized and ready to go out. And that always depends on how much traffic we have. One of the outreach opportunities we'd like to see is starting in some of our local churches providing a uh, Save Your Photos Sunday where um, people there can invite their friends to even come in and bring photos, and we will do a Save Your Photos event um, for them. Awesome. Um, one other question that's come up and um, uh, it, from the audience here is, they, you showed pictures and spoke about on the flatbed, so Rachel or Kim, um, the question is, do you use a uh, auto splitter or photo selector tool when you do that? to make it so you can do more than one at a time. I don't, I don't remember. Do you use the photo Um It's the software that came with it. I'm, I'm not sure. 
So you I provided the software, so yes, you do. <laughs> That's the question, yeah. the answer to that. Yeah, so uh, we do use that so that you put one, you can put multiple photos down on on the uh, yeah. platen at the same time. And, and then it will not only scan all of them in context, but also uh, split them apart. Correct. And I've got a question for you here. Um, but before that, let me give out a statistic. Um, they, uh, the best estimate out there is about there's 3.5 3 trillion printed photos. About a trillion of them either are lost, gone, we can't find them anymore, or they've already been digitized. So there's been some concern that people have about, well, if you do stuff for free, um, you know, there won't be anything to scan. I did the math, and if we scanned at 500 an hour for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a, uh, a year, we would own, we'd get them all scanned in 57,000 years. So um, do, you, <laughs> how, do you feel, you touched on a little bit, but can you expound a little bit about how you feel about uh, if you're losing revenue when you do it as a for-profit organization? Oh, absolutely not, Rick. We don't we gain clients because we're making this offer. And we know statistically as well that the average client is going to have somewhere between thirty five hundred to six thousand photos that they're going to bring in. Fifty free scans does not hurt our bottom line at all. Um, in fact, I don't think we would have gained some of the more corporate clients that we have, the museums and libraries, without having shown that we're community involved. And so it, it, I am absolutely serious when I say doing good for others does good for your business. It's a win-win. All right. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for your insight on that. There's another question is that you've touched on it a little bit, but can you tell us more about how you find these opportunities to do events? So I'll give that to Ann first. And Boy. Then. <laughs> yeah, I think when it comes to disasters, it's open the paper. When yeah. it comes to community-based events, it, there's a special something going on every day for someone in your community. So you can approach, first of all, the church that you're a member of, or the synagogue, or the temple, whatever it might be, and see if they're interested. And if they're part of a synodical group, you have then access to those other churches. When it is Preservation Week coming up in a month, so back in, in March, we were approaching libraries and saying, hey, you have Preservation Week coming up. Would you like us to come in and be part of your presentation? And they were thrilled. A free presenter is always valued in a lot of these different places. And that we brought something for val of value in the free scans just made it easier for them to promote. And we find that with TV promotion as well. When you're doing something that is benefiting the community and has a value added feature, you get you get more press for free. So if you have a library, if you have a church, if you have a business in your community that has existed for more than 10 years, they're going to have an anniversary to celebrate. Call up your local businesses and say, hey, hey I noticed that this is your 74th year in business. What are you doing next year? Where are all the things you're, you're um, archiving from your business? Let's start by getting the community involved and bringing their things in, and then they might hire you to do the rest. It, it's, it's, um, it's pretty easy to find opportunities just by looking in the paper, looking online, and knowing who you know and reaching out to your friends and family and their business associates. Perfect. Thank you, Anne. That's a great advice. Um, I know there's uh, all sorts of event calendars in the local newspapers, uh, probably worth opening it up or going online and taking a look at them, and maybe you'll get some ideas as well as some of the other groups that are already out meeting in your area. A couple of questions that have come up. Yes, this program is being recorded, 
and you will have an opportunity to review it online, and we'll send you a link to that afterwards. Um, the next question is, is Save Your Photos Day, I found it on the website, doesn't look like it's been updated, can you tell me more, and is it related to, to this? Uh, to that, that person asking the question, it is somewhat related. Um, Save Your Photos Day is actually spearheaded by the Association of Personal Photo Organizers. Um, there is a group, a committee that comes together about this time every year. So I am sure as they start catapulting themselves towards September that they will be updating that website very soon with more details and information. Uh, we spoke, I heard, you heard Ann speak about it. The Association uh, for the Libraries in America, American Library Association also holds a Digital Preservation Week. And uh, we'll make sure, I'm going to make a note to make sure that we have those links available to both of, of those sites in our follow-up email to you. Um, so that answers that. We've got one more question here, and this is for Rachel and Kim. Uh, you said that you could get involved with the group for disaster recovery and that you're doing training and certifying and having a handbook. Can you tell us more? Um, we are in the final editing of the first two parts of our handbook right now. It's been a very, very tedious process. Um, now on our website, nationaldisasterphotorescue.org, there is a tab right up there where you can volunteer or you can even donate to the organization. Um, when you click on volunteer, it'll take you to a form to fill out. And then that form is automatically sent to our, um, our personnel board member. And so you can be on the list to work in even your area if a disaster happens to occur. Um, the training online is something in the near future. We have found out that we can do training videos. And then you would go to um, a, a small test or questionnaire about that specific aspect, and then you would be certified um, in that particular area. You know, we trained the people in Van, Texas, and they are actually our first um, kind of charter group um, now in that area of the country. So they worked in the Garland and Rowlett area, and we were just there to support them. Um, so that's, that's an exciting thing. But on all of our Lost Photos Facebook pages, on our National Disaster Photo Rescue Facebook page, and our website, you can click on the Volunteer tab. And there's specific information you can put in there, you know, if you are willing to travel or if you're interested in working in your specific area, what kind of um, things could you bring to the effort. Um, one thing that we don't necessarily look for we get a lot of people that want to help us restore photos. And some of those people want us to send images to them for them to fix. And that is just something we, we do not do. We do not share people's images um, with other individuals. There are other nonprofits that will help restore photos after a disaster. And so we refer them um, to those individuals. So we have to kind of keep an eye on who comes through our <laughs> volunteer application process. But you can go to any of our Facebook pages and website and we'd be happy to have any volunteers. Awesome. And it sounds like you're creating an organization that could respond. I know our home base is in Florida and uh, we're getting ready to get to hurricane season. So I'm sure different parts of the country will be able to respond to different kinds of disasters. Um, so. What a great opportunity to jump on board. I'd invite everybody, and I'll put a link in the follow-up to your site as well, Rachel and Kim. Thank you so much. Um, and there's a quick question here of, you, you touched on it a little bit, but um, it, it's, it's could you offer any tips to putting on a successful uh, savior photos event or whatever that you would call it with a church or wherever. And how many people will show up? Are they always big events or are there some that are different sizes? Well, there's definitely a variety of sizes. Um, we've had events that had as few as three or four people. We've had events with 20 or 30 or more. Um, it, the biggest joke that is absolutely true is people will not come if you don't invite them. 
people will not come if they don't know you're having an event. So getting out into social media, into your free calendars on your local um, community newspapers, getting on to as many different locations as possible and promoting your event is going to make a big difference in how many people you have attending. Also, being aware of what your capacity is for an event is important. For example, when we hold our uh, Save Your Photos Day events here at our Pixology studio, it's all hands on deck because we know that um, it, the, the, the mayor of Oak Creek has become both a good friend and a client of ours and he tweets out all our events and he will show up and with him while well, the mayor's going to be there so then a couple aldermen will come and if they're going to be there well then some people from the office come and so events that are at our studio can become quite busy. It's important that you have adequate staffing um, whether it's your 10-year-old child that's volunteering to take people's names when they come in, or whether you have a business partner that can help with actual scanning. You want your events to be smooth and to be inviting. And so how you promote it and how you prepare for it, you define success by one photo saved. So um, we've had small attendance events that turned out to be amazing business building events. Well, and we here at Easy Photo Scan, we, we say when you've saved one, you've saved one. And um, uh, we've got one less to save and a whole bunch more to go. So um, we're with you. I think events have different, uh, uh, different participation levels. Um, there was a question here about the um, Save Your Photos Sunday sounds like a great way to connect and do good. Can Rachel or Kim give us more information on how to get started? So, Rachel, Kim. Um, basically, a, a Save Your Photos Sunday would involve, um, you know, making arrangements with uh, with the church staff to see if this is something they would be interested in. Um, you would probably go and present or have somebody present um, what Save Your Photos Day is um, and let people know that on this certain day you need to bring photos with you, um, you know, to, to church or whatever. And then um, our group usually sets up and is waiting. And then we start in the afternoon and we scan and then they can come back later in the afternoon and pick their photos up. But it does involve, you know, you have to let people know what you're doing so they can bring their photos. And we even allowed them like an hour after the church service. If they forgot, they could run home and get photos. And it, you know, it wasn't just for them either. If they had friends that wanted to come and, and scan photos or have photos scanned, they could do that too. But it, it just involves a little bit of communication um, you know, with people of the, in, within the church and the pastor. And, and um, you know, we did it with, uh, with a worship center that had opened up their space and allowed us to do the Save Your Photos Day in Joplin. And we kind of did it as a thank you um, to them. And it was, a really, it was a really good experience. So yeah, I would encourage anybody to, um, to do that. It just kind of opens some doors and, and reaches out to the community. Great advice. And uh, there's been a question that's been brought up. And it says, how do you share the pictures that have been digitized um, I'm going to respond first because we've also been involved in events. Uh, we go to Roots Tech every year where um, it's the largest family genealogy show. And um, for the last two years running, we've digitized about 80,000 different photos for families in and about the um, uh, three days of the event. So uh, a lot of scanning going on in digitization. Um, we found that if you have somebody transferring disks. We learned this the hard way. We'd say, bring your own thumb drive, and we'd have them available. Uh, we couldn't make them available for free, so we found a source and just charged them what it cost us to, to purchase some. But we found the transferring time took a lot of time when you're doing a big event. Um, so what, what we did this last year, and worked very successfully, was we delivered them up 
to a Dropbox account, and then the folks could download them and do whatever they wanted. We did Dropbox specifically because it allowed us to put the original uh, resolution up and uh, gave the folks the immediate access to be able to see them. And we keep that online for about four months, and then that goes down after that. But I'll open it up. Um, Anne, how do you handle it? And then uh, if you'll turn it over and ask uh, Rachel and Kim. Rick, we also use Dropbox. We have found that it moves the most smoothly. We have um, on our community scanning form that people fill out at the beginning, we actually have the steps listed right on there if they've never done Dropbox before. And we will give them the option of getting a hard copy or getting a copy on a, a flash drive or CD at a later time. Um, but again, if it's a, a larger event, to keep it moving, Dropbox has been a great option. So that's what Pixali. Um, when we've had Save Your Photos Day, we have just put them on a thumb drive. Um, we've got some that we received through a grant, that, so we don't have to charge people for them, or they can bring their own, or they can bring a CD or something like that if they would prefer. Um, we haven't used Dropbox other than the one Save Your Photos Day that Rick was a part of. Um, there was there seemed to be a lot of people who didn't know how to use it. <laughs> um, so we just decided the, the thumb drives were just the best for us. Um, and I think maybe one time we had another computer that was solely dedicated to transferring them from one to another. Um, and it, it worked smoothly. And then... Um, you know, so far as the ones that are scanned in the disasters, we save all of those to a thumb drive. They, the thumb drive, there's a thumb drive for each box of photos or with the photos. We also, um, we also have them saved to the computer, and we put them onto the server for the photos onto the server um, and onto Facebook also. And then if somebody wants the image, Digitally, we have that high-resolution one that we'll give them if they want it. And, you know, we can give it to them on a thumb drive or send it to them, however they want to do it. Well, there you have it. So I guess uh, uh, you can choose, uh, especially if you get your thumb drives as, uh, off of a grant uh, for, for that. I had never heard of that type of thing, but that's a great idea. Reach out. Maybe you can get some folks to donate them to you. Um, great idea and good advice for both. Um, I think Anne's concept of giving instructions uh, is, is a good idea as well and what to expect. So um, if there are, it does not appear that there are any more questions. So we want to thank you all for joining us today. It has been quite an informative session. Um, I've enjoyed hearing from Rachel and Kim about the National Disaster Photo and invite all of you to participate um, and go online, find out more, get their handbook. Um, finally, I would encourage you, if you have any questions, we will be sending out a follow-up email. Please go, and we can get you in contact with folks. We have recorded this session, and we'll look forward to sharing that with you. So until next month, we look forward that uh, you have a great rest of the month, and we'll have a great presentation for you in our next series. Thank you so much for joining.